If I had to describe calculus in one short sentence, I would describe it as the math of change. Imagine changing velocities, accelerations, populations, areas, volumes, and more. In the beginning, calculus is divided into three separate areas of study. Limits, derivatives, and integrals. Let's start with limits. Although limits don't have too much to do with changing rates, we define other definitions of calculus using limits. Limits find the solution to the problem of what does this function approach as this variable approaches this value? Limits are often used when a function has a variable on the denominator and a division by zero is involved. They're also used as variables approach infinity. Take the equation f of x equals one over x. What is the value of this function as x approaches infinity? We can use a limit to find that as x grows in value, the function's value falls to zero. Here's another equation g of x equals sine of x over x. What does this function equal if x is zero? If we subbed in x as zero right away, we'd expect sine of zero over zero, which we know we can't do. Although it won't be covered in this video, we can use some limit rules to deduce that the function equals one as x approaches zero. This can be verified graphically too. Let's move on to derivatives. Simply, a derivative is the instantaneous rate of change at some point of a graph. What does this actually mean? Well, let's simplify it a bit. The gradient of a function is the slope of a graph, or in other words, the gradient of a function is the rate of change of that function. If we take f of x equals 2x, the function is growing at a rate of 2, the gradient. f of x rises by 2 as x increases by 1. The derivative is simply asking what is the gradient at any point on a graph. Derivatives are super useful too. One popular application is to physics. Let's suppose we have a situation with a bicycle riding along a road. If we found the derivative or the gradient at any point of the journey, we'd be finding the rate of change of the position, or in other words, the velocity. If we found the derivative again, we would find the rate of change of that changing velocity. We would end up with acceleration of the bicycle. I might be getting a bit carried away here, and this isn't too important to understand, but I think it's important to see some real life examples as soon as possible of calculus to help with the fundamental understanding. Let's move on to the final component, integrals. Integrals and derivatives are closely related to each other. Simply put, an integral is the inverse of a derivative. You might hear it referred to as an antiderivative. Earlier we found the velocity of a bike based on the position at some time, but what if we were given the velocity of the bike at various points in time? and we're tasked with finding out how far it traveled. We'd need to anti-differentiate, or in other words, integrate. Let's explore another example of integration, finding areas under curves. Let's suppose we want to find the areas under two points on a graph. We could integrate over those two points. But wait, why would we care about the area under a curve? Finding areas under curves can be used to find average values and total distance traveled, among other things. If we took our velocity function of the bike from earlier and found the area under the curve, we'd also find the value for the total distance that was traveled. Now that you know the fundamental concepts behind calculus, how do you begin actually learning it? I don't personally like the way it's taught in schools and I advise a slightly different pathway to learning it or self-teaching. This advice can be used to teach yourself calculus or supplement learning it in school. As with learning any other topic in math, I believe it's done in two parts building the foundational knowledge and concepts, and testing yourself and the knowledge base. Luckily for you, you've just completed the first step of learning calculus, which is introducing yourself to the subject as a whole and getting an overview. From here, I'd strongly recommend watching 3Blue1Brown's calculus series, and keep in mind that the videos are really insightful, but you might need to watch it a couple times or revisit it to fully understand it. Another great resource is Khan Academy. I'd advise learning the concepts from an array of different sources so that you can get a deeper insight into a subject and have a stronger intuition. The stronger you can build the foundation, the easier everything else will be. The next step is testing your knowledge. Start with some easy problems to consolidate your learning, but the best progress is made with the really difficult problems. The problem that you spend 30 minutes trying to solve is going to be the one you remember. You can find these problems online or in calculus books that are used in university or high school, and make sure to avoid doing only problems you enjoy or are good at. It's important to do the problems where it targets your weaknesses. 
I'll link all these resources as well as others in the description of the video. And if you have anything else to add in the video or any advice to your students, please leave it in the comments and please leave a like if you enjoyed the video.